And good evening, AP Physics students. Mr. Gerson coming at you here with our last assignment out of Chapter 19 on circuits, Problem 27. Uh, also going to talk a little bit about capacitors to get you going on those other couple problems here. Okay, I've got a circuit diagram that looks like this. And it looks rather harmless, but we look more closely and we see that we have two batteries instead of one. And the batteries are virtually fighting each other. Go, they're kind of going opposite each other and we've got lots going on here. Let's tackle this problem here. A little bit of new information. Okay, so we're going to use Kirchhoff's laws, uh, Kirchhoff's rules to tackle this problem. And let's do this. Let's label some things. So the book is called this battery up here, V1, and uh, it's got the bigger voltage than this battery down here. So I'm going to start with this guy and I'm going to start labeling some things. I'm going to call the current that goes out of this battery I1. Okay. Um, now I don't know for sure uh, that that's the way it's going to go in the overall circuit. But I got a pretty good hunch since this is the biggest battery current goes out of the positive terminal. All right. Now, when it gets down to here, the current's going to branch, right? And I'm going to call this I2 because they called this R2, all right? And uh, this is, v they called this V3, so why not call this current uh, going down here I3? And, of course, we would have I3 coming uh, back up here after it goes through this battery, and then I2... Um, would be going that way and join back up and this of course would be I1 because the current going out of this battery and coming into this battery have to be the same. Okay, let's use Kirchhoff's uh, junction rule and we should know uh, that the current flowing into uh, any junction has to equal the current flowing out. Basically, electrons can't be created or destroyed randomly. So current flows into this junction, current flows out, I1 should be I2 plus I3, all right? Uh, that makes sense. Now, what might be new or what might be a little um, less easy to understand is the loop rule, okay? Now, technically speaking, there are three loops in this problem. The current goes around this loop this way, right? Um... The current goes around this loop, uh, which I could do. I could also do the entire loop. Um, so there's three different loops I could go around to use the loop rule. Remember, the loop rule says that the total voltage is up and down uh, must equal zero. So I'm going to start out, and what am I going to do? I'm going to start out, and I'm going to use this loop. So this is the loop I'm going to follow. I'm going to go all the way around the outside of the circuit in this first loop. And I'm going to start right here, and i got to end right there, all right? Uh, your book says call that point A, all right? Well, what do I do from point A? Well, I go the correct way through a battery, right? And when you go through a battery uh, the correct way from negative to positive, uh, you get bumped up voltage, right? So as I go from here to here, I'm going to bump up 9 volts, Okay. Uh, I go here, I go here, I'm going here, I'm going here. Boom, I hit V3 here. Uh, and what happens here? I'm going the wrong way through a battery. I'm going from negative to positive. So I would be charging a battery rather than discharging a battery, right? So I would lose 6 volts as I go the wrong way through this battery. Okay, going here, going here, going here, going here, going here. Nothing so far, just traveling around wires. Uh, join back up here, going here, going here. What happens here? Well, I'm going through a resistor, so I should drop some voltage. How much voltage should I drop? Well, by Ohm's law, it should be the current I1 uh, times R1. Okay? And then I get back to the point I started. And when I add all of that up, uh, that voltage drop should be zero, okay? Now, if I simplify this, I would get 3 minus I1 uh, times R1, which is uh, 22 ohms, right, should equal zero. 
And then I'll let you guys solve this for I1, okay? Now, Mr. Kirsten, okay, so I know I1, but how could I figure out, say, I2? Well, um, so I'll leave some space here, let you guys figure this out, uh, figure out I1. Let's figure out I2. Let's start here, but this time let's go around this loop here, all right? So I'm going to start at point A. Again, I go up 9 volts, right? Uh, go here, go here, go here, go here. All right, uh, now I should drop some voltage as the current uh, goes through uh, this resistor here, R2, all right? And, and R2, uh, I'll just call R2, right? And here, 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 back, 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 back. Um, minus, I'm now at I1, right? And R1. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm adding up all the voltage gains and losses around this loop. Okay, I know 9, I know, I don't know I2, but I know R2. Uh, should we just write this out here? 9 uh, minus I2 times uh, R2 is 22 uh, minus I1, uh, which I would have solved for um, up there, uh, times R1, uh, which is also... Uh, 22. Oh my gosh, I'm doing this wrong. R2, pardon me, R2 is 15, you guys. R2 is 15. Whew. All right. So I can do that, and I, I know the only guy I don't know here is I2. So then I could solve for I2, plug that back into here, and solve for I3. Now I'm going to let you guys do the algebra work here, and I'm going to give you some hints then on some of the other problems here. Okay, uh, capacitors. Um, we've talked about resistors in parallel um, and series. Next up on the agenda, let's talk about capacitors in parallel and series, all right? So I got two capacitors hooked up to a battery. Each of the ba capacitors has capacitance C, but they're hooked up in parallel. What is the equivalent capacitance kind of like equivalent resistance of two capacitors in parallel like this. Well, here's how I like to think about this. What would happen if I got these two metal plates of these capacitors so close that they touched? This would be like one giant capacitor, right? And this giant capacitor, what kind of capacitance would it have? Well, it would still have capacitance epsilon naught area divided by D, except the area would be twice as big. And if the area was twice as big, the capacitance would be twice as much. Now this isn't a proof, but I hope it kind of makes sense that if I have two equal resistors in parallel, their capacitances will add up. Now, notice this is opposite the formula for resistors, right? When I had resistors in parallel, the equivalent formula was 1 over, uh, which is different than um, it is for capacitors in parallel. Um, likewise, uh, the, equiv the formula for, so this is parallel, okay? Likewise, the equivalent formula for uh, capacitors in series is uh, what it is for resistors in parallel. Okay? So if I want to calculate the equivalent resistance of a couple capacitors in series, um, what would that look like? It's 1 over. Now, what do capacitors in series look like? Well, they would look like this. Okay, so hook up capacitors like this. Uh, also notice here when I have resistors in series, one important thing to notice, I would get positive charge here, negative here, positive here, negative here. The total amount of charge in here, notice that no charge flows across a capacitor, so the total amount of charge in here would have to be zero. Okay. In other words, the charge on each plate here, charges on each plate would have to be the same. 
Okay, that's some uh, good uh, background information for you on capacitors, uh, both in parallel and series. Some good hints on problem 27 on how to apply Kirchhoff's loop and junction rules. And as always, we have a little joke for you here at the end. We have a cartoon, and here it is. It's a far side cartoon. Here we go. Mathophobic's nightmare, St. Peter at the pearly gate in heaven. Okay, now listen up. Nobody gets in here without answering the following question. A train leaves Philadelphia at 1 p.m. It's traveling 65 miles per hour. Another train leaves Denver at 4 p.m. Say, you need some paper? <laughs> I know you guys would have no problem with solving that problem. So, good mathematical reasoning type folks you are. All right, nice work, physics students. We'll see you tomorrow.